Jorgensen has to go the long way round the outside. Lindemann's still right in the thick of this. Let's not forget her, and she's trying to take Taylor Brown on the outside. Gwen's going to have to go very wide here, and that's why it's difficult. And Lindemann has got first call here. All of a sudden, she stopped the Americans' momentum. She leads Taylor Brown, and she's not going to be caught. Lindemann's going to be the champion. Taylor Brown will hold off Jorgensen for the silver. What a finish. Um, tell us about the race. It was a unique format. So I did three rounds of a 150 meter pool swim, a roughly 3K uh, bike around a 200 meter track. We're in the outside lane, so it's a little bit more. And then um, a little bit more than a 1K run on the track. And how did you decide to do this race? This, so Abu Dhabi was canceled and I felt like I needed some really hard competition before Yokohama. I just wanted to test myself against the best. And this had, I think, one of the best World Cup fields that I've seen. And so that was a major factor. Another major factor was points-wise. It had more points than Hong Kong. And there was basically only one way I could get passed on points. And it was um, a scenario that would happen in... Um, Yvonne, and so I decided to go there to secure my points because I wanted to secure my spot for Yokohama. Great. And so walk us through the format of this weekend. So it was, everything was done the same day. There was in the morning heats and there was 12 people in each heat. Two, there's a six lane pool, two people per lane. And in the heats, we didn't have a full field in the women's side, so in the heats, basically, you had to be, I think there was nine or ten people in your heat, and you needed to be top six or seven to automatically qualify for the semifinals. And if you weren't, if you didn't make that top six or seven, then you went to something called the, I'm going to butcher this, repercharge. And if you went to that, then you could also qualify for the semifinals. But I won that race the first one which actually i felt like was my best executed race in the entire day uh but yeah i won that one so i went straight to semifinals. so then later in the evening there were semifinals, and there was three heats of semifinals. it was at like for me it was 7 30 some people raced at seven and then in different heats and then if you're top four in there you went to the a final if you're fifth through eighth you went to the b final and so i went through to the a final and that was at 9.40 p.m. and we did it all again. And what were you in between those? Obviously, you, you got to do three races in a day. Like, how are you, you know, fueling in between? And what are you, you know, racing that late at night presents a unique challenge. Yeah, especially because I'm normally in bed. So I, it, it, going into the race, I knew there was a lot of things that were unknown just because I've never done this race before. I've never raced three times in one day. And for, you know, a 10-minute race, you don't really need that much fuel to get you through the race so obviously it wasn't having any fuel during the race but in between races especially between the the morning session and the semifinals there was a huge chunk of time like five hours and so for me it was you know immediately after the race I did you know like a 10 minute cool down on the bike and then I got some food in right away had a recovery drink uh, that was actually before the bike but yeah so got that fuel in and then was able to lay down for a few hours the the time between the second races was hard because i finished my by the time i i finished the race immediately hopped on the bike had some recovery and then i finished the bike 10 minutes later and i only had an hour 40 until my next race and so it was hard to know what to do so for that one i actually didn't really warm up again because i felt like i didn't have enough time and but yeah it was all about you know right after the race and getting in a lot of sugar that was easily digestible and that wouldn't upset my stomach for the short fast racing. I would say I'm a much worse pool swimmer than open water swimmer and one of those reasons is my flip turns are horrible and it's something this year I've had two people that I, not my, not Jamie my coach, but two people that I really trust uh, in, in my journey who told me my flip turns were horrible and I you know, we're like, do you want to work on them? And I was like, absolutely not. I'm never going to use flip turns. And then I signed up for this race and I was regretting saying that. So I actually spent some time, Julie Dibbins helped me before practice one day to just 
you know, quick tips on flip turns and brought back a lot of memories from high school of, of how to flip turn a little bit better. And I, I do think I improved before this race. So that was definitely something that's way different than open water swimming. Yeah, for my bike setup, you know, we uh, had smaller tires than usual and higher tire pressure than usual. And, uh, you know, no water bottles on the bike. So, so that was different. It wasn't like a velodrome where it was super aggressive, but it was banked. And it was, at the start, it was very scary. So we had 10 minutes the day before the race to pre-ride the course. And 10 minutes goes by really quick. Um, but so we rode it and it just, it felt fast. It felt like you couldn't pedal through the corners. It felt like you were going too fast through the corners in the race. You don't even notice really how fast you're going. So it's, it, I think the hardest part for me about that was I had a hard time keeping track of how many laps we did <laughs> this race. I remember telling somebody going in, I was like, I could win by a lot or I could get dead laps. Like it, it's just, it's a unique format where. I've said this over and over, but like you make one mistake and it can be day over. We had some people who were great athletes ranked in the top five, um, you know, Olympic medalists who got out before the final. And so it, it was a race that you really had to focus and stay engaged. And it was, yeah, one mistake and your whole day could be over. That final race, I felt like I executed it the worst. I had actually, it was interesting. I think I had the exact same swim time in all three races. And the swim time was actually not what you saw for 150. It was like after you got out of the water and you went over the timing mat. But yeah, you had to, you know, swim the 150, pull yourself up out of the water. The other interesting thing about the swim was there was no tees on the bottom of the pool. And so you just had to be more aware of flipping. I think as swimmers, you know, where we subconsciously flip as soon as we see the tee. But that was something that was different. But yeah, so that last race, I would say I, came, I didn't come out last out of the water, I don't think, but it was like, there was somebody who was way out in front and then basically like a bunch of us that came out together and went to transition. I remember mounting my bike. I was, I was probably like, I was third to last, um, coming out of transition and, uh, mounted my bike and, you know, I was at this gap. Everyone was kind of in front and I was just kind of holding this gap. And I remember that's like, it was on the second lap, first or second lap that that wheel slipped out. And when it slipped out, I mentally just didn't stay present and focus on what I could do in that moment. And I, I, I was just really not happy with how I executed that race because mentally I got out of the race and was just analyzing, why did I slip? What's gonna happen? Do I need to slow down? Maybe I need to go in the outside lane when I'm going around the corners. And so I was thinking about all that stuff instead of thinking about racing. And I would say over halfway through the race, I finally was just like, Quinn, just race. And I kind of was able to get back into the moment, same presence, you know, I was um, telling myself like, just race now, judge later, don't think about what happened. And so that's when I was able to then close the gap to the front path. Lindemann. And Gwen Jones has got herself gone to the back of the pack. She's almost there, so strong riding for Gwen. And that is absolutely crucial. It could be pivotal that. She's almost there. Trish is that, is that athlete kind of hanging off the back a little bit. There she is. Yeah, just trying to stay with them. And if she can do that, then over a thousand meters, be a brave man to bet against her. Got a transition. Pretty sure I was dead last on a transition because I was dead last into it. And it's a race where you can't really make up time in um, when you come in last because you have all this traffic in front of you. And on the run, it was. I feel like it took me longer than I wanted to catch up to the front. And then I made a couple tactical errors. I felt like I should have gone when I didn't, uh, could have gone earlier. There's all these things that, that happened on the run, but uh, you know, overall I feel like, yeah, I, I was happy that I continued to push myself and never give up in that race. I feel like there's a lot of times when I either made a mistake or did something that could have gone better. And I continue to believe that I could um, yeah, we win that race. I did not win that race, I got third. And it was a very exciting race. And um, you know, Laura Lindman and GTB were in front of me. They got first and second and uh, very well deserved. They were better than me on that day. And it was just a super fun racing format with all the fans. And I think it was something that, to me, brought some hope back into triathlon, that people actually do enjoy it. I had a little bit of a doubt after Abu Dhabi. And so with, this race, it was just really exciting to see everyone there cheering for a triathlon. 
Perfect. And you know, you did have the fastest run split of the day. Was that encouraging to you as you're approaching? Um, you've got another birthday coming up. I'm so old. Yeah, I got a birthday in this month, April. And I think, you know, it's something that a lot of keyboard warriors say that I'm like too old or getting too old. But I do think, especially if you look at women's distance running, you see that uh, I believe at my, like there is a point where you get too old, I can't be 60 and be running, but at, at my age, I do believe that I can still be as fast as I've been, if not faster. And it all comes down to if you want to do it. So yeah, I mean, I've done so, you know, I went to marathon training and now I'm, I went to now this, you know, super short, super sprint. So um, yeah, to be able to, to run some fast times is, I think, I mean, I didn't really think much of it. I just thought, yeah, like that's where I should be. So um, yeah, exciting times. Up next for me will be Yokohama, which is May 10th or 11th. And yeah, that's a big one. That if you get top three there uh, and first American can qualify for the Olympics. So that's what I'll be focusing on the next month. And super excited to, to go there and, and race some of the more, uh, some more of the best in the world. Thanks everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed.